Okay, Hannah, it's now uh, the day after your third and final ketamine infusion, okay? It's, in fact, it's April 8, um, 2011. And uh, we just did your pain thresholds. We just went over those with you, okay? There's been a general improvement in your pain thresholds, okay? And also, um, we commented in particular about the fact that, um, that since your pain thresholds were improving from day, um, day two to day three, that there's a good possibility if you went a fourth day, you would have gotten additional benefit, okay? Mm -hmm. We, would, we didn't know that until we actually measured them, okay? Yeah. Now, we want to talk a little bit first about how things went during the infusion. We got you up to 200 milligrams an hour. That's a good dose. And you are a uh, expensive, expensive date. date. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because when we got you up there, we did a little video clip on you. Here, here you are, you know, remembering just about everything I put out of my mouth, and that's a little unusual. So your brain is, uh, it's hard to, uh, it takes a lot of ketamine to get you to be dysfunctional. But there was, there was one thing that limited us um, in terms of going higher, and that was the fact that it was some evidence of dysphoria. It looked like you were feeling a little uncomfortable, okay? I didn't say you were hallucinating. Do you recall hallucinating like lions chasing you or anything like that? I just felt like I was dying. You're dying. Well, that's a that's a pretty bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but you also know that if it wasn't for your parents being there, that made that uh, not such a big threat to you, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but the point here is that um, we didn't feel like we could push it. We also talked about the fact if you should ever need another ketamine infusion, you'll you'll tolerate it a lot better with regards to dysphoria. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing about you that we, we knew, kind of, and your mother suggested it in advance, that you have a weak stomach, okay, with any kind of medication. Mm -hmm. So we found we, can, we finally were able to control your nausea, your vomiting, by getting, giving you, um, number one, 16 milligrams of Zofran before you came in, by uh, including uh, Versed not only at the beginning, but at the end of the infusion, so you wake up slowly. And third, uh, we found that we have to keep your mouth dry, okay? and we used Robinol to do that. Mm -hmm. So when those three things came together, we finally got it right for you so that you would leave in a comfortable, uh, with yeah. a comfortable stomach, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to go through these exercises with you and see what, uh, what improvements we, we have, if any, okay, in you, as far as function is concerned. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do here is do the vertical finger test, please. Look straight ahead. There you go. Are you having any pain when you do that? No. You didn't have any pain before, and Dr. Kirkpatrick didn't create any new pain, did he? No. Okay. Take that right hand behind your head, please. Keep your head straight. Are you having pain when you do that? Not as much. But not as much? Bit. Not not in there. And, of course, that extends into your back re region, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now take your, uh, your left hand behind you. Okay. Very good. And you're having pain when you do that? Just a little bit. And I believe it was it worse on your left side when we started? Yeah. I think it was. You just have a little bit back there now. Okay. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to take your right hand out in front of you, please. Open and close it as fast as you can. Very good. And uh, do the, uh, uh, the other side, please. Okay. As fast as you can. Right. Now, the other thing here um, that you um, reported is that you felt less stiff in general. It's easier yeah. to get up and get going, right? Yeah. And that's important for you to appreciate that because that tells you that this, the reason you're not moving isn't just because of pain, right? Your muscles are stiff. Yeah. And then ketamine helps you get, get that stiffness out. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit here about the, why that's so important in terms of exercise later, okay? Okay. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to turn our attention down to your feet. So I want you to take your right foot, rotate it. Good, good, good. Wiggle your toes. Okay, hitchhike back to Colorado. There you go. On the other side, rotate, please. Wiggle your toes and hitchhike back to Colorado. There you go. Good girl. Okay. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to get up by the front of the door there. And um, I want you to um, walk toward me, please. And walk on back, please. Okay. Now, did you have any pain when you did that? No. Okay. And remember, before we started on that left ankle area, I think you had pain there. Am I correct on that? Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to tiptoe on your toes toward me, too. It's like a ballerina. That a girl. There you go. Go on back, please. Now, did you have pain when you did that? A little bit. A little bit in the heels? Okay. All right. But not like it was before. No. Okay. Now I want you to walk on your heels uh, three steps, please. That a girl. Kind of, kind of hard to keep balance, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Go on back. And tell me about the pain there. Remember, that was the worst pain you had when we started, isn't it? Yeah. So how's it doing for you now? It still hurts a lot. 
but not as much. Not as much? Okay, all right. Okay, um, Dad, get out of the way. She's yeah. going to leap from there <laughs> over to the to stretcher. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, now, um, one of the things we talked about here, Hannah, just for the record, is that we talked about the fact that you have this allodynia in your back, right? Yeah. And what we're going to do at this point, we're going to have you stand up, and Mom's going to help me here with this, okay? Because <coughs> I want to doc, I'm going to document this on video. So turn around, and um, there we go. Now we got all these little permanent marks on you here for the rest of your life. So this is where we started <laughs> before, okay? And then we ended up inside, and then over here is where we started. So the allodynia has shrunk. Okay, but I want mom on this side just so mom so it's on the record. Just go across, tell your mom to stop when she low, start. That's right, start out there and work your way in. Tell your mom to stop when she gets into that Ross and sit right about there. Okay, so mom knows how to test you now. Okay, yeah, so that has shrunk up, and that's going to help because you know, if you got allodynia, it, 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 it impedes your ability to use your arms, your shoulders, and 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 so forth and so on. Now, you go ahead and sit down, please. Now we're going to talk about how to get you even better, even without ketamine, okay? We talked about the heated pool exercises, didn't we? Yeah. We talked about how, um, uh, the, uh, why, and there, there were really four major reasons. Reason one, you got to get that buoyancy because you can't do exercises effectively uh, weight-bearing on that ankle of yours down there, okay? So buoyancy is one of the factors. The other factor is the water is a potent desensitizer to your skin. So I would expect that allodynia to shrink even more in your back with that, okay. with that uh, exercise. You can't afford um, a, um, a relapse due to re-injury. Mm -hmm. Okay, so water is a pretty safe thing to get engaged in that's least likely to cause re-injury. Okay? Now, uh, the fourth reason why the water is so valuable is that and as you've learned over the over this period of time, is that uh, stress is your worst enemy. It can really set off your RSD. Water can be a profound stress reliever. Mm -hmm. And there's techniques we talked about, like Watsu, and uh, which I think you you're aware that there's a video on our website. You can look on that. It's one of the things some patients really enjoy. Okay, that they can do. Um, and uh, there's a national association for these people. They're certified. You need about three sessions with a certified instructor to learn how to do it. And you, you need a partner, and it could be with your mom or your dad uh, in the water to do that, okay? okay. Now, okay, now let's turn to uh, another very, very important question, okay? And that is, how do you know if you need another ketamine infusion, okay? How do you know? And we talked about pain being a very unreliable indicator of that, didn't we? Yeah. And we talked about exercise tolerance as being the most reliable way to determine that. Yeah. So let's just say if you get into the heated pool and you're hypothetically the best you can do is let's say half a minute. The next week it's a full minute. Then it's a minute and a half. You're improving in your exercise tolerance, aren't you? Yeah. You don't have to feel anxious mm -hmm. about having another ketamine infusion because you're getting better. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if you're not making that progress, or if you're going in the opposite direction, you probably need another ketamine infusion. On average, on a two over a three-year period, most patients are looking at probably one or two more of these infusions, and they have to be done at least over a three-day period, and you have to get the dose up to really do the, and hold it up there to do the benefit that you need. Okay. Okay. Now. Um, the uh, other thing we talked about is. Uh, is this. So let's supposing you do your 30 second or half a minute exercise in the water. Okay? Mm -hmm. You get out of the water and you have no pain. Is that good or bad? Bad. That's right. Why is it bad? Because you have to keep going and you need a good hangover. You need a good hangover, right? You need to feel sore. And athletes will tell you they can't develop their bones, their ligaments, their muscle without doing that, okay? Yeah. Effectively. Now, let's supposing you, you do that half a minute and you get out and you're laid up in bed for two, three days. Is that, is that a good hangover, bad hangover? Bad. That's a bad hangover. And so you got to get that right balance in there, don't you? Yeah. Okay? All right. So that's, um, that's really, really important, okay? Now, another thing we talked about here is uh, this, the idea of using narcotics like the opioids, like Percocet, hydrocodone, methadone, and all those uh, narcotics to treat RSD. So I'm going to ask another question here. Is there a role f 
for narcotics and treating RSD. Yes. All right, explain that to me. Um, like if you go hiking and twist your ankle or something, then you should take them so that the RSD doesn't come back. Yeah, but what is that pain? What's that kind of pain from uh, from that injury you talked about? What's that called? Acute. There you go. Acute pain. That's right. And it's a, it's a totally different mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas, whereas the neuropathic pain due to RSD is not very responsive, hardly responsible, and as a matter of fact, it actually can be made worse with narcotics, okay? The, 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 the acute injury type from a, from a toothache, from a dent, being in the dentist chair and all that stuff uh, responds very well, including up to the narcotics. And, they, and you don't have a choice. You have to treat it because if you don't treat it effectively, the pain can set off the RSD, can it? Yeah. All right. So there's a vital role in the use of narcotics in treating RSD. Okay, and that's important to keep in mind. Okay. Now this is the this is the time when uh, we kind of turn to your parents here and see if they have any questions or any comments to make about how you've been doing over the last uh, three days. Well, she's been a trooper through the whole deal, so it's, we're proud of her. Good. Yeah. She did. Yeah. She was a very cooperative patient. Very cooperative. You're a good patient. Yeah. Absolutely. How about how about you, mom? Any 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 other questions, comments? No. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to stop for a second because I have a question. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we just we just talked about the fact that this is a very educational experience in terms of the fact two things. Number one, you have that allodynia in your back, and a lot of doctors don't appreciate patients with RSD can get that. Yeah. And also, we talked about that the, there is a very vital role in the use of narcotics. And you knew what the role was, and I think that's also very educational. So if, with everybody's permission, I want to start over here with, first with you. Is that okay if we put this up for educational purposes? Yeah. Okay, and Mom, is that okay with you? Yes. And also Dad over here? Yes. Okay.